Much as we'd like to resist its charms, the hype train is a very easy vehicle to board. It's so easy to be swept up and along with sweet promises of games that are just over the horizon. More often than not, fans are left looking at their new game with quizzical expressions as this is most definitely not the product they thought they were getting. Dime Jewels, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight overhyped video games that became massive disappointments. Number 8. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Ah, what could have been, eh? At one point in time, the Marvel vs. Capcom IP was hotter than Johnny Storm with a fever and was dominating esports events left, right, and center. With each passing entry, the roster and respect for the series seemed to balloon and balloon. However, with Infinite, things burst in pretty spectacular fashion. The hype was most definitely real for the game when it was announced, with publisher Capcom proudly announcing that they saw this once again becoming the fighting game of choice for pros. They even teased a new fighting mechanic that would incorporate the Infinity Stones to help players field teams of differing quality and use said stones as a leveler. Yet, the hype began to wobble intensely as soon as certain questions were asked, namely, what the hell is up with these graphics and where the hell are the X-Men? To which the devs bungled responses of, uh, well, we'll try and fix that, and you don't need the X-Men, other characters will fill those roles anyway only stirred the pot. When the game landed with a thud, it wasn't because of the impact of its intentions, but because of its weak story mode, pathetic roster, and bare bones online, causing it to trip and land on its face. Ouch. Number 7. Mass Effect Andromeda I don't think you can have a discussion about overhyped disappointments without including the likes of Mass Effect Andromeda, because not only was this a long-awaited return for one of the industry's favorite franchises, but was also something of a clean slate for the developers going forward, as they tried to move away from the rather sour note ending of Mass Effect 3. In the lead-up to launch, we got hit with all the tried and tested notes, the huge lens-flared sci-fi aesthetics, the oncoming threat of a new evil, and of course, a heavy emphasis on player choice and exploration backed up with fleshed-out party members who you would be prepared to die for. However, upon launch, the only death here was the players dying a little inside as they witnessed the myriad of glitches and bugs that simply should not happen in a game this size and of this pedigree. What was once pride in the series turned into a mortifying experience of watching others mock the title online with a compilation videos and analysis of the balked character designs. While things weren't terrible across the board, with the combat in particular being more than acceptable, everywhere else the game sags like loose skin on a rotting corpse. The story felt ham-fisted, the party members annoying, and the mission structures lifted from other generic RPGs with little care. This was less a love letter and more a post-it note with SEX scrawled all over it. Number 6. Battlefield 2042 now, it might be too early to call Battlefield 2042 a massive disappointment, but when you look at the fan backlash the game is receiving in its opening weeks, it's safe to say that many aren't feeling that their faith and money has been well placed. Hard crashes are prevalent, lag spikes are causing weapons to feel like spitball shooters, hovercrafts and other vehicles are overpowered and making a mockery of the in-game physics, and it's all wrapped up in a title that feels anemic for long-term fans and almost cringeworthy to others as it desperately tries tries to chase the likes of Overwatch and Call of Duty with its focus on specialists and Extraction Royale-style modes. Add to this a supremely limited amount of weapons and maps, and you can't look at this title without seeing the grim spectre of EA lingering over things, hoarding up all of the good items and maps for DLC or microtransactions. Lest we not forget, a special edition of this game costs upward of £200, and this, alongside all of the marketing blitz that promised the best Battlefield ever, left many fans feeling like their wallets have been hit as hard as they were in the heart by EA's latest Skipfire. Fingers crossed for the fixes, right? Maybe in a year or two this will be the game it promised to be on launch. Number 5. Lawbreakers Gears of War mastermind Cliff Blazinski once lamented aloud to the press that he was honestly shocked and kind of disappointed that no other developer seemed to want to try and integrate the active reload feature that was so prevalent in his meaty shooter series. Now the man had a real point as I can't think of another title that actually made the act of reloading pretty fun, but clearly Cliff and his team at Boss Key weren't so shy when it came to borrowing ideas, because when it came to Lawbreakers they were definitely interested in chasing trends rather than setting them. 
things began so well for this project, as not only was Cliffy B doing his usual masterclass routine when it came to PR and advertising, and every outlet that got their hands on the title was reporting how well things looked and played, but the hype train became derailed in dramatic fashion thanks to one simple fact. On the one side, we had the likes of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and on the other, we had Overwatch, and Lawbreakers just didn't do enough to sway either community to give it a look. By playing things too safe, even weeks after launch, the player base for Lawbreakers was dwindling, and the title became an example of an overhyped project that hit the water at speed but just couldn't make a splash. Number 4. Marvel's Avengers the greatest heroes finally assembled in one place. How could this be anything other than a smash hit delivered with the power of the Hulk? Well, it turns out that when you stuff your generic action title with enough oily microtransactions, bizarre corporate tie-ins, and put in a grind so heavy that even Destiny players looked at it and said, whoa, that's a bit much, that not even Earth's mightiest heroes could save the day this time. Now, to its credit, there are elements where Avengers shines. Namely, that with a group of friends, it can make for an enjoyable, if slightly mindless smash and bash experience. However, we need to remember that even activities like, I don't know, urinating on puppies is slightly more fun with friends involved, so maybe that doesn't carry much weight. And we also need to remember just how much this game was overhyped by Square Enix in the lead up to its release. Not only did they promise action far above what was delivered, but the single player campaign that was heavily touted as being a key selling point was drab, flat, and padded out beyond all reasonable doubt. And when server issues continued to plague launch, it meant that early adopters were left with a bit of a beached whale. And if you don't consider the game to be a disappointment yourself, Square Enix certainly did, as they went on record to blame Crystal Dynamics for the poor reaction and sales Avengers generated. Pretty harsh. Number 3. The 3D Mario All-Stars Pack It almost feels wrong to bag on a Mario game, such is the usual quality that each of the portly ex-plumber approaches his titles with, but when it came to the recent 3D Mario All-Stars pack, what should have been an utterly butterly dream turned into a curdled nightmare. Well, for some hardcore fans at least. Containing Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy, one can't exactly look at this pack and not immediately feel like a syringe of pure high has been injected into your spine. But things hit like a savage come down once fans realized that they were actually getting the most inferior versions of these classic titles. With Mario 64 in particular, which runs off of the Shindu version, meant that many glitches and bugs that speedrunners used were removed entirely. As a result, this hardcore subset of the community had little reason to buy this pack, and for those that were still interested, well, they were put under undue pressure by Nintendo themselves when it was revealed that the collection would have a limited physical and digital release, meaning that after March 2021, no more new copies would be sold. This move alone added to the overblown hype of a lazy collection of ports, in turn only highlighting the disappointment felt by so many. Smooth moves, Nintendo. Number 2. Cyberpunk 2077 Talking about Cyberpunk, for me especially, is a rather draining task, as I was so on board the hype train for this that I wasn't just in first class, I was up at the front shoveling coal on the fire for the drunken deranged train operator. I wanted to love this game so very much because it seemed to tick all the boxes, even those that I didn't know needed to be ticked. A grimy sci-fi setting, a huge open world to explore, body modifications aplenty, it sounded too good to be true, and that's because it was. From review outlets playing versions of the game on PC that were far more stable than both the console generations, which then slanted perspective on the title, to the litany of bugs and issues that rendered the game unplayable for many, Cyberpunk's Cyberfunk hit hard and wallowed for weeks after launch, thanks to issues with the devs not being able to patch the title and even a supposed hack of their own database. When Cyberpunk shines, it's like a brilliant diamond, but all too many times it was just buried by absolute cack, and not even the delightful Keanu Reeves could save this project from being being rightly lambasted for its poor quality control. Again, my heart wants to tell me that this game will become a rightful masterpiece in time, but for many, the damage has already been done. And number one, Balan Wonderworld. What the hell is going on here then? That was legitimately my response to seeing Balan Wonderworld for the first time, a title that I'd heard many murmurs about seeing as it was being headed up by Sonic and Dreams Into Nights creator Yuji Naka, while also getting a shedload of funding from purveyors of fantasy Square Enix. Screenshots from the game began to whip the world into a frenzy, as here it really looked like the title would be a kind of kaleidoscope of fun and frantic platforming set against aesthetics that were inspired by a bloody acid trip. Off the 
off-the-wall characters in an utterly insane world, sign me up. However, the only collider here was reality smashing gamers in the face upon launch, as in short, this title was not good. Now, if I were a simple man, I'd say that the game should have been renamed Bland Blunder World, but even that poor wordplay is honestly better than some of the aspects of the title. Balan Wonderworld is a title so laced with broken aspects that it feels like walking on smashed glass. With each rubbish power-up, invisible wall, or abysmal QTE cutting the skin of the hyped-up fanbase deeper and deeper. Yet, the worst aspect of it all? The bloody dance sequences. Honestly, I could see my own skeleton at these points because my skin tried to invert itself at the sheer cringe. No thank you. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight overhyped video games that became massive disappointments. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. You, yes, you listening to this video, you are not a disappointment. You are a massive ledge and deserve all of the best things in life, like love, happiness, and respect. And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Don't beat yourself up for mistakes that you've made in the past, because remember, we're human. We all make them from time to time. So go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.